We're going to turn our attention now to discussing aqueous solutions, which contain various solutes in water as the solvent. Because water is the solvent for aqueous solutions, and aqueous solutions are everywhere in chemistry, we want to talk a little bit about the chemistry of water before we get into the details of solutions, how they're prepared, how they react, and that kind of thing. So let's begin with a few of the important properties of water. The molecular formula of water is H2O, and this is one of the most well-known molecular formulas in all of chemistry. The geometry of the water molecule, if we pay attention just to the hydrogens and oxygen, is bent. And in terms of bonding, this is a polar covalent molecule. And by polar, we mean there's unequal sharing of electrons between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Electrons spend more of their time around the oxygen atom than around the hydrogen atom. Put another more theoretical way, the filled orbitals are larger near the oxygen atom than they are near the hydrogen atom for water. Because of these polarized bonds and their orientation, they both point in this direction. Water has a very strong dipole moment, and consequently, it exhibits very strong intermolecular forces that depend on a dipole, such as ion-dipole forces, dipole-dipole forces, and for water specifically, hydrogen bonding. There are two lone pairs attached to the oxygen atom in water, and the OH bonds are positioned as far away from these lone pairs as possible. This explains the rather perplexing bond angle of 105 degrees in water. The expected bond angle, if we imagine the entire electronic arrangement as tetrahedral, is 109.5. But the smaller angle, the smaller HOH angle than 109.5, is typically rationalized by appealing to a repulsive effect of these lone pairs. The negatively charged lone pairs repulse the negatively charged bonding electrons, pushing the bonds closer together. The truth is a little more complicated than this, but this is a nice sort of back-of-the-envelope explanation for water's bent shape and the small bond angle of 105 degrees. The lone pairs on oxygen are going to be really important for intermolecular forces within water and interactions of water with certain types of covalent solutes. They get involved in hydrogen bonding, as we'll see shortly. Now let's think about what solvation looks like at the molecular level. When a solute dissolves, water molecules surround it. So for example, when NaCl dissolves, the solid NaCl crystal, which is a repeating lattice of sodium and chloride ions, breaks apart into separated sodium plus and Cl minus ions. Something that's worth paying attention to here is the orientation of the water molecules with respect to each ion. If we look at the chloride first, we see that, for the most part, hydrogens are closer to the chlorine than the oxygen atom is. The hydrogens are oriented close to the chloride atom, while the oxygens are generally pointed away. It's a little bit ambiguous here because there's a lot of jiggling going on, but for the most part, the hydrogens are closer and the oxygens are farther away. Notice that the opposite situation is in play around the sodium cation. The oxygen atoms here are closer to the sodium atom, and the hydrogens are farther away. We can rationalize this arrangement by thinking about the dipole moment in water and the fact that it points from the hydrogens toward the oxygen. The negative end of the dipole, where partial negative charge is hanging out, is on the oxygen atom, while the hydrogen atoms possess partial positive charge. As a consequence, the negative end of water's dipole is on the oxygen atom, and that negative end of the dipole is attracted strongly to the positively charged sodium cation. The exact opposite situation holds true for the negative chloride anion. The positive end of the dipole, near the hydrogens, is attracted to Cl-, leading to the hydrogens positioning themselves closer to the chloride anion. For covalent molecules, molecules held together by covalent bonds, we don't see the same breaking apart effect that we see for ionic solutes. Covalent molecules, such as sucrose, stay together when solvated by water. But water does still interact with polar covalent solutes in some way, shape, or form. For example, in sucrose, there are a number of alcohol groups on the periphery that can hydrogen bond with adjacent water molecules. This hydrogen bonding holds water closely around the outside of the solute and leads to solvation. Hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole interactions allow water to solvate polar covalent molecules. What we can say in general about water's solvation ability is that it's great at dissolving other polar compounds. Like dissolves like. Water is a polar molecule, 
Because of that, it's great at dissolving polar solutes. We can trace that back to water's strong dipole moment and the ability of its partial positive charges to be attracted to negative charges in the solute, like you see here, and the ability of its negative end to be attracted to positively charged solutes, such as the Na plus cation. In addition, with polar covalent solutes, such as ethanol, which you see on the right of this slide, water can engage in hydrogen bonds with hydroxyl groups and dipole-dipole interactions with the overall dipole moment of polar molecules.